Okay, in this video I'm going to be going over my heat exchanger that I built and how it incorporates and uh, plays into the rest of my brewing system. Um, I have other videos posted on uh, the different components to my brewing system and also my roller mill here, roller mill here so check those out and uh, comment on them. And uh, you know, if you have any other pointers or see something I'm doing wrong, um, I'm by no means an expert, so uh, give me some comments and, and uh, let me know. <coughs> Excuse me. So my heat exchanger, it sits up high on the system, higher than the, uh, the mash tun and the boil kettle. The reason is, um, and I'll, I'll explain what, uh, what it looks like inside in a second, but there's water in there, uh, filled almost to the top, and that's going to be my, right now it's the, the heat exchange medium for uh, putting the heat into the mash system. Um, but the reason it sets up high is I'm going to use that water later to sparge, which is basically rinsing, rinsing out the grain once I get done mashing it and put it into the boil kettle. If you watch my other videos, uh, I'll show you that process too, so um, just check those out if you, if you have any questions or if that doesn't make sense. Uh, so basically, I'm, uh, I'm circulating grain or water through the grain right now, which is called mashing, and um, that water goes through, uh, is driven by that pump, goes through the system and up into my heat exchanger through this, this tube right here. And then it comes out of the heat exchanger right here and gets circulated back through the grain. But I have to be able to control that temperature. So you different, different beers call for different recipes and the temperature rests, uh, which is basically um, different, uh, different temperatures that are, that are held for a certain amount of time. That's, that's all part of the, the actual recipe. So I have to be able to control that temperature. The heat exchanger, when it comes in, when the, when the wort, which is what it's called when it, before it's fermented, um, the wort enters the heat exchanger here, and I'll show you the inside of the heat exchanger. This is the other side, and it goes through that copper coil. That's 50 foot of copper there. And if you see in the middle there, I have two heating elements. Those are 4,500 watt um, heating elements at uh, 220 volts or 240 volts, whatever they call it. Um, that heats that water that's in there. If you, if you hear that, it just kicked on, it's calling for heat. So those heating elements are firing right now and putting heat into that water. You see it kind of steaming and boiling. That heat from the water that's in this keg gets transferred into that water that's flowing through that coil. So it's an indirect heating and that, that allows you to heat the, heat the water uh, or the wort without scorching it because there's a lot of sugar in that, in that wort. And if you, uh, if you directly heat it, you, you, run the, you run the risk of scorching it and getting some, some bad flavors in your beer and, and all sorts of other possible, possible things um, to uh, kind of mess it up. So there's no, there's no chance of scorching it here. Um, if you heard, heard that again, it just kicked off. Um, I got a fairly precise um, temperature control on it, so it, it kicks on and off uh, about every every two minutes. Um, you see right here, using my flashlight here. That's a temperature probe. I, I control the, the the temperature of the the water in the heat exchanger because that that basically dictates how much heat goes into that coil. Um, so so that that temperature probe is is monitoring that the heat in that that water here. And that is hooked to this temperature controller on my control box. If you see, I have it set for 160, and right now it's reading 162. So it just kicked off, and that water, there, that wort that's flowing through that coil is picking up the heat in that water and, and actually cooling it off. And um, in a few, in a minute or two here, it's going to kick back on. And uh, when it kicks on, this light I have uh, hooked to the. Um, Direct the direct line to the the heaters, so I know when they're actually on. There's no guesswork. I don't I don't have to guess to to see when they're on. It it, it tells me it tells me right there. And I also put a control on here that even even when they're on, I can I can turn them off if I want to. Right now they're not on, so that's not doing anything. They're off anyhow. But once this calls for temperature, and they're on, I I can turn them off if I want to. I've never had to, but I like having that control there to uh, to cut that power to those heating elements. You know, in case I have a a leak or something, um, which has never happened also, uh, but I like being able to, to know I can just run over here and, and throw that switch and turn those off. If you look at the underneath of my heat exchanger, you can see I brazed in uh, two stainless steel nuts on the bottom of this, this keg, and that's where those heaters screw into, and it basically screws in just like it would into a water heater, that's, and that's what those are from, if I didn't mention that before. They're, they're just for a, 
bought them at the uh, hardware store just for a, a heater, a water heater, and um, that's what they're doing right now. They're heating the water. Um, I'm going to come up with a way to, to cover those terminals because that's not exactly safe, but it's just me that brews and there's nobody else down here, so um, I know not to touch those. Uh, one other thing, um, to get that water up in there that I showed you, um, it would be kind of a pain to have to get up, uh, get up on this chair here to, to put that water in there, so I made a, a run. I can, I can fill it up. I fill the, the mash tun up before before I even start brewing, before there's anything in there. I put the put water in the mash tun up to this uh, crease here. And I run that through up this tube up into the bottom, you can see here, into my mash tun. So I can fill it from down here. So I don't have to get up there and fill it. I just turn my pump on and it pumps that water up into there. Then I shut this valve off to, to keep it from coming out. And then I fill my mash tun for my, my mash water. That's really convenient. Um, just, just put the water in here, pump it up into the heat exchanger, and then uh, and start brewing. So that's, that's kind of the rundown of the heat exchanger. Um, leave me comments if you have any questions or if you have any pointers for ways I can do it better. Because, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm by far not an expert. So... Uh, uh, let me know if there's anything I'm doing wrong or if you have any ideas or uh, if you like my system, give me a comment. Thank you.